Generation before Mashiach came, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai in his time, imagine in his time the Romans were looking for him. They were killing the pregnant ladies, they were cutting their, their, their stomach open and taking the baby alive out. The Jews were suffering like crazy at that time. They destroyed the Bet Amikdash. All these things that happened in those years. And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said, Oi, how lucky I am that I don't live in the last generations before Mashiach comes. How do we know that he's, he's talking about this generation? I want to go over the list with you and tell me if the things the Gemara predict happened or not. I just want to assure you that the things I'm going to mention to you did not happen 50 years ago. 5-0. 50 years ago, none of these things happened. The Gemara says, Masechet Sanhedrin, the Gemara says like this, Tanya, Rabbi Nehorai Omer, Rabbi Nehorai says, Dor Sheben David Babo, generation that Mashiach, Ben David, the son of David, is coming, Nearim Yalbinu Pnezkenim, the youth, the young, the youngsters, will insult the older, the old people. No respect for old people. Remember, when I was a kid, when we used to get on a bus, and there was an old man getting on a bus, this is only 30 years ago. No, no big deal, one generation back. Believe me, it's not a lie. Seven, eight, nine, ten, depend how many children were on the bus, getting up right away to the old person, giving him the seat. Or a pregnant woman. She gets on a bus right away. Right away. Today, it doesn't happen. Once in a while, maybe there's a nice kid that will allow, will, will allow the old man to take his seat. But not only that. My father once told me that today it's a new mode, moda. What? The, the young kids get on a bus and they get old people to give them their seat. Old men, get up. I want a seat. Serious. Then there's no smoking on a bus. They light a cigarette. Everyone is choking. The driver is afraid. They may stab him, you know. It's, today in Israel, they, they imported a million goyim from Russia. A lot of them are drunk. There's a lot of prostitution. A lot of them are crazy even when they're not drunk. So when you want to park your car, if you got somebody angry, you took his spot, he killed you right there. It happens every month. Every month, worse than Chicago. Worse than I don't know where. It, it happens all the time. So the Gemara says, the old people will have to suffer from the young ones. Skenim yamdu lifne neharim, the old ones will rise when they see young ones coming from fear. Bat kama behima, girls are anti, they rebel against their mothers. Don't tell me how to get dressed. Don't tell me how long my skirt should be. I'm talking religious girls, non-religious girls, forget about it. The mother cannot even speak to her. A mother, a daughter-in-law against their parents-in-law. The daughters-in-law don't like their parents-in-law. If your parents are coming here for Pesach, I want to go to a hotel. I'm not going to stay here with your parents. No, no, no. I remember one time I got a phone call from somebody from Brooklyn. He tells me, listen, I don't know what's going on here. Tomorrow I, I need a place to go get divorced. You know anybody that can, can help me with a divorce? I said, what happened? You just got married. Not even here. What happened? He said, oh, forget it. My, my wife's parents running my life. They don't leave us alone. They come here every day, open the closet, check how much food I buy in the house. If my wife's car is broken two or three days in the driveway, they're already starting to tell her, your husband don't care about you. You see, you're three days in the house, he doesn't fix the car. Forget it. I have to constantly protect myself from morning to night against those parents. I can't take it anymore. So I told him, wait, wait right there. I'm on my way. I got there. Such nice couple. Believe me, we sat two hours over there like they got remarried. We made rules. Everything was clear. She promised she's going to stick to these rules. Not even a week after, he calls me up. He said, a miracle happened. They lost their job here, the father. They have to go now to Florida. Over there, somebody, one of his friends offered him a job. 
and they're leaving, Baruch Hashem, that's it. They went to Florida for a few years. A few months ago, they came back. <laughs> but a few years, they had children, the marriage was... Mwah. Now they came back, I get a phone call from here two months ago. I see right away, if he calls me, there's a problem. So I already knew there's a problem. I just didn't know what kind of problem. I didn't expect them to come back. He said, forget it. They're not even here a few days. Everything is back to the way it was. We're not leaving us alone. What do you see? Parents and, and daughters, or daughters-in-law, the Satan makes war between them in this generation. Why? It's one of the signs before Mashiach come. The next one, Pnei Ador ki Kelev. People in the old days had Adrat Panim. You look at a person you enjoy, intelligent, tzaddik, mamash pure. Today, look at the people. You get on a bus, on a subway. Baruch Hashem, I didn't take a bus for 20 years. Only in the airport. You go to the airport, you have a bus. Two, one minute, you go, you, one terminal, you take the bus, you become sick. <laughs> Why? By looking at the people there. Why? One time I got an advertisement to my mailbox. AT&T wants to sell a new service. Telephones. If you remember, that was maybe seven, eight years ago. They show owners of their dogs that look alike. You remember that commercial? And it was, they send it to all over the United States. I open up the thing, the catalog. I see a goy and his dog. A goy and his dog. A goy and his dog. Maybe ten, ten couples. And they, and, and they brag about the fact that I look like my dog. There was the whole commercial here. He wants to show, wow, look at me. I, I'm a twin of my dog. That's the commercial of AT&T. Here is this mara. Then, inflation. Everything is expensive. Keeps going up. Price is going up every moment. Every moment. Then, Aben Enomit Bayesh Aviv. Children have no embarrassment from their fathers. Not only that. One guy, one time in my lecture, told me I had a war, I had a fight with my father. My father broke a chair on my back in a restaurant. They were in a restaurant. <laughs> I, I had such chutzpah, my father couldn't stand this anymore. In front of everybody, he took a chair. I turned around, he broke it on my back and sent me to the hospital. Then, today, in Israel, in Israel, in Israel, I'm not talking here, here it's already, we know about it. In Israel, if you're high society and you want to give a gift to your son when he finishes the army or before he goes to the army, what do they do? He takes his son to the prostitutes of Amsterdam on a trip. The father and the son goes together. The Gemara says, father and the son don't go into the same shower. Remember, in the old days there were no showers like today. So there was a public shower, mikveh. You don't go together inside. Your father goes in, he comes out, you go in. Or your rabbi or any Talmud Chacham that you know. It's embarrassment, you go together, even though it's only a shower. Out of respect. Over there, they go together. He pays the ticket. Naarim lo mitbaishim me'aviyem. Father and sons in Israel, hundreds, doing drugs together in a living room. In this generation, doing drugs together. How did you start? They asked the kid, my father offered me cocaine. <laughs> I can't be. His father offering him to try. One time a guy told me, you the religious people are close-minded. Fanatic, like in Iran. You don't let your children see anything. Because I told him that my children never saw a goy. At that time it was true. They were young, they never saw a goy. They didn't go anywhere. Where did they go? They go from the school to the house. Then the neighborhood, it's all religious people. That's it. They never saw a goy except the mailman. And the mailman doesn't really, they don't really see him. He comes, he puts the mail, and he drives away. So this guy couldn't believe such a thing. He got angry, he started to scream against the religious people. So then I say to him, let, let me ask you, so how do you, how do you educate your own children? And he said, I let them see everything and let them choose. Whatever they want to choose, it's their right. I'm not telling them what to choose. So I say, let's make a deal. How old is your son? He says, six years old. I say, let's make a deal. There was a place in Manhattan, a club, 
for sick, mentally sick people, you know, that there is Sodom and Gomorrah over there. Tomorrow night I want you to take your son over there and have a drink with him, over there, inside. I'm going to tell you the address, you're going to go over there. You promise that you're going to do it? He say, hey, don't exaggerate. What is this? I say, ah, you see, you're a hypocrite. You just scream, I let my son do whatever he wants, I show him everything, we are open-minded. I say, but this, it's already too much for you. This you don't want your son to be exposed to, right? So you have those lines, those red lines, and I have different red lines. Who say you right and not me? You understand? The point is that I go by what the Torah told me. You go, but your mind think is okay. And in a, in a year or two, it's going to be in fashion. You're going to do that also. What do you think? How did they come to where they came? It didn't start right away that the father take his son to Amsterdam. It happened a little by little. Every day he sink a little bit more. The Gemara continues, Plenty of grapes, and the wine is very expensive. What does it mean? They throw containers of grapes to the ocean every minute, by the minute. If you one time you go by the ocean, you see there's a place in Israel, in New York, in Florida, in L.A., all the places where they have ports, you're going to see that they're dumping over there tons of fruit to the ocean. Why? Millions of dollars every day to the ocean. They don't want to flood the market with grapes or with tomatoes. They have too much. The markets are not selling a lot. They don't want to bring more to the market. Because let's say that you pay 2 or 3 dollars a pound of tomatoes. If they're going to bring more and more and more tomatoes, it's going to be so much. It's going to be a quarter a pound. They don't want to work. Why well, I'm going to carry all these cases and going to bring it in, that they pay me, they're going to buy five pounds and pay me a dollar? For this I'm going to work all day? No. So they dump it to the ocean. Ah, there's a million Israelis going to sleep hungry every night. Why don't you take it to a place, give it to the poor people? No, but if we're going to do it, then the people know that they can get it for free. The little that they buy, they're also not going to buy. That's the way they think. Ah, Parnassah comes from Hashem. They never heard of it.